Welcome to another episode of The Epic, Epic Family Road Trip. Trip. Hey guys, as usual, this has been a very eventful week. The whole week started with Caroline being in Europe and the boys heading down to the wedding of their cousin uh, back where my family lives. At the same time, I had a previously booked speaking engagement down in San Antonio, Texas. So Carol and I headed down to Buffalo to grab a flight to San Antonio. Hey guys, as you notice, we're off the island. We were just camping in the cold, snowy uh, Ontario, Northern Ontario, and what do you know, here we are on the river walk in San Antonio. Pretty amazing life we lead, and uh, we're gonna enjoy some delicious Mexican food. If you ever get down here to the river walk, there's restaurants everywhere and they're spectacular. Tomorrow I'm speaking at a conference, and then we're heading back, and we'll be getting back in the Jeeps. Good morning, guys. We are in beautiful downtown San Antonio. Um, Got up early to get a coffee and just to stretch our legs, but the weather is so warm. <laughs> what a difference uh, from back home. But last night they had that big uh, parade going on and we got up this morning and the whole place is cleaned up. It's amazing. They had crews working all night, picking up all the chairs and they're still sweeping up actually over there. So pretty neat um, to be here. Later this morning, I will be giving my talk uh, to a big group that's staying here right on the river walk and after that uh, we'll be heading back heading back home uh, anxious to see see the kids and to get back on our adventure so many birds yeah, it's beautiful so my talk went awesome what a great group um, I really enjoyed that and so now we're down at the river walk we've got a few more hours here and uh, we're gonna grab something to eat right along this beautiful river. It's a lot more quiet today. The big crowds from the river parade are gone, but uh, there's always a nice place to eat along the river. So we're enjoying San Antonio. Yummy. One of the major food groups in Texas is barbecue. So we got brisket, sausages, and it's gonna be good. Now the kids had an amazing time as they always do. First of all, the wedding was a lot of fun, but then they spent a couple of days down there and I have nine brothers, as you know, so uh, the kids' uncles and their wives and all the, their children are such a blast to be around. And so they end up getting invited from house to house, eating meals and just being overwhelmed with hospitality, which is really nice. But at the same time, Pete, ended up kind of forgetting about his type 1 diabetes and not managing it as he normally does and and he ended up getting quite sick when carol and i arrived back from our trip we could notice we noticed that he was starting to deteriorate and it it was reminiscent of when he first got diagnosed his eyes were sunken in and he was not feeling well at all so we made the decision to immediately get him in a vehicle and take him to the nearest hospital. Uh, they admitted him right away and started him on an IV drip to rehydrate his body and uh, to bring his blood sugar down slowly and carefully. He ended up staying in the hospital all night. He's doing great now. Uh, they released him six o'clock in the morning and we headed up to the lake and he's been just uh, recovering and resting. It really knocks it out of him when that happens. Um, thankfully, the, the only other time this has happened is when he first was diagnosed. So for the last seven years, he hasn't had a problem. But it was a good reminder for him and for us as a family that T1D, type 1 diabetes, uh, juvenile diabetes, is no joke. Um, it can really knock it out of you, and it can actually be very, very dangerous if not properly managed. So um, that was a good uh, wake-up call for Pete to uh, really take care, especially when you're having so much fun. So after we picked up Pete, we headed up to the lake and when we arrived uh, the folks at the marina had said just one day ago the ice there was still ice across the lake here in the back side of the lake and the day we arrived it had just broken up and pushed aside so we decided to make an attempt to get out to the island for the first time this spring sure is nice seawater I mean it's I know. Uh, I never thought oh, yeah. I'd love it so much <laughs> all right guys pretty exciting made it all the way back up to the lake and the, the main bay here is completely open 
the good folks at the marina have this steel boat in the water. So we're just going to head out that way and see what we find. Made it across. This is super exciting. It seems, well, it was only a week and a bit ago when we were ice fishing out there, driving across in snowmobiles, so pretty cool. Um, so we've got this boat from the marina. We're gonna go get the, some of our boats in the water and uh, bring this back and then start trucking in the stuff we had from, uh, from our trip, so let's get at it. There's some good thick ice under the boats with about six inches of water on top. So I think we'll lift the motor, lower it on. If, it, if the weight of the boat doesn't crack the ice, we'll just push it, slide it across the ice and get it out. Because right here, it's open water, so. Right. Welcome to spring. Really exciting for us. Spent the whole winter here. We got off for a few days because we had to get out of town, but uh, it's, it's so nice to come back and see the last bit of the ice leaving the lake. It really doesn't feel like that long ago that we were... Snowmobiling? No, putting these all up. Oh, it's, it's so true. Yeah. Wow, that's uh, pretty thick. Still good. Five or six. Yeah, it's thinner back here. We were able to break all the ice behind the boat, so we'll be able to lower it into the water, and we'll see. But I think we we'll, shouldn't have too much problem sliding it out. So that's a good reminder to take our time going across the lake, because there's probably little icebergs floating everywhere. <laughs> all right. You can actually uh, pull yourself off the ice once we unhook you. Yeah, it looks like so that's really good. Motor started, first turn. Um, the impeller's working, everything's beautiful the way we expected. It's The weight of the boat has pushed the ice down, and so he probably can just reverse right out of here. I just gotta unhook the front. stay for a long time we now have a boat in the water tomorrow we're going to take that boat in for the new motor we bought last fall so pretty exciting times let's go get the groceries and get set up is it tied up no <laughs>
So Dan's bringing around the other boat, we're going to put this one in the water and tow it back to the marina, load it onto a trailer, take it into town for a new motor, which we're excited about. So when Dan comes, we can get the, the block and tackle set up from that side and move it over to this side. But this one we're ready to lower down. I'm actually going to leave it up for a bit and let the water drain out of the back. Just sit there. Still a lot of ice in there. Yeah. And if you can hop in there, I'll hand it to you. Till next year. So Carol and Pete took the uh, our boat and uh, we're bringing it in to take that old motor off. They're just going to keep it and hopefully one day we can fix it, that little two-stroke. But uh, they're putting on a 40 horse Yamaha just like this one here, uh, four-stroke. And it's going to take about three or four days uh, to arrive. So we're really looking forward to that coming in. Um, it would be awesome to have two reliable, wonderful boats for fishing and for just getting back and forth to the marina.
Good morning. What an amazing feeling waking up here at the island and almost all the ice is off. We now have boats in the water. Uh, after a long winter, this is just an incredible feeling. So in the past, we've always left the island in the fall before the ice and then come back in the spring when the ice was gone. But to have gone through a whole winter has just been an incredible experience. But right now, we are in the process of changing everything from winter operations to summer operations. So we've got to put the snow dogs away, pack them all up and put them in probably in the boathouse for the summer. Um, we've already got the boats out and in the water. Um, we're putting away our uh, ice fishing rods and pulling out our summer rods, all that kind of stuff. So it's a fun, busy couple of days here. We're also going to be transitioning from winter water where we're carrying buckets to summer water which is uh, on demand so that's going to be huge for us makes it l a lot easier to take a shower to flush the toilet to wash the dishes um, so we're looking forward to getting that going and then we're um, going to sit down and do some planning on our next uh, overland trips uh, for the short term we're going to be exploring more of canada we had told you we were going to be heading down to overland expo and unfortunately it doesn't look like we're going to be able to make it just logistic wise um, to get this all done and open and ready get our vehicles ready and then we'd have to race all the way down to the southwest it just doesn't look like it's going to happen so um, we're a little bit bummed about that but we are excited about the adventures ahead here in ontario and eastern canada there's so much to see in fact one of the first ones we're going to go on is known as the most remote road in North America. So stay tuned for that, that's coming up. But for now, step one, let's get the snow dogs and all those uh, snow trailers put away. All right, we'll probably uh, oil those down so they don't rust over the summer. We'll let them dry out first and they'll be ready to go when the ice comes back. Hopefully not for a while.
So these are our ice fishing rods. We won't be needing this for measuring the thickness of the ice every day. So these go away and uh, that rack over there will be full of all our summer rods. Can't wait to go fishing. See the ice buildup in this V. We sustained a little bit of damage to this eaves trough, but nothing, nothing we can't fix. It just needs to be put back in place and a couple of screws put in. So that's pretty good for a whole winter with lots and lots of snow. So we made it back to the island a lot earlier than usual, actually. Uh, we still have chunks of ice floating around, which is something completely new. But um, even though it's nice to be up here, especially with open water, we took the boat out a few times and uh, just kind of enjoyed that. We're not going to be here for too long because we are prepping the Jeeps to head out on our next adventure. And this time it's going to be around Canada, which is something I've been pushing for us to do for a while. It's uh, something I've really been interested in doing it. We did do a bit of Canada back in the day with the RV and um, a few excursions from here, like to pick a lake with the Jeeps. But this time, this summer, we are really prepping to do a thorough trip all through Canada, mostly on the East Coast, which is, in my opinion, the best part. Newfoundland, Labrador, all these remote areas uh, that truly show the rugged nature of Canada and its wilderness. So uh, one of the roads is a huge challenge that we've been thinking of undertaking, but if we do, it will be an experience of a lifetime. You're so far away that from civilization that if you get in trouble, you might as well call the International Space Station because they're only 500 kilometers or something above you. And the nearest civilization is a lot farther than that from you. So that's a pretty daunting thing to think about, but it's an experience and a challenge that we would love to, you know, accept and try out. Um, but for now, we're just prepping the Jeeps and we'll see what we get up to this summer, but whatever it is, it's gonna be good. And hopefully we're gonna bring in the bikes from Montana and finish getting those all ready to go. The, they're fully built and uh, just waiting for me and Pete to hop on and take them somewhere. So yeah, and it's an uh, exciting summer coming up and spring. We'll see what happens. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see you down, down the road. road. Right, Lando, you were good that time. You didn't mind a bit of rain. You don't mind a bit of rain. Oh.